Hey guys, this is Imi Chicken. Welcome back to Team Pandora. Today, we have a package from the Amazon rainforest. Let's learn! The year is 1992. Popular quotes being, It's the economy, stupid, and I didn't inhale. While I was waiting for games to load on my Amstrad, my buddy had a Commodore Amiga. You could make animation, play games, or even make music on it. After seeing The Simpsons and F1 GP on it, I was sold. Thankfully, many of the major vendors sold it. The advice at the time was to go for a standard A500. But after a drive to Blackpool with my daddy, I was a proud owner of an A500 Plus, and the rest was history. 30 years later, we have the A500 Mini. Very much like the recent Mini systems, this one also intends to capitalize on people's nostalgia. This one has 25 games inbuilt, and also comes with a gamepad and tank mouse. As always, this box comes with six sides. The back side is my personal favorite. I like boobs. I am John Lou. We reviewed the whole games list in a separate video. Links at the top. This little tape here holds the whole box together. Like young Wesley. And let's open her up. My God. Wow. Oh my God. Oh, you guys. I can't believe this. Oh, this is incredible. Oh, the detail. Oh, you couldn't do that with a 3D printer so easily. That is... Oh, flip. What they've achieved is purely stunning. Even though the keys are non-functional, we have a miniaturized Amiga 500. And even though we bought it from Amazon Germany, we have the British keyboard layout. Made in Hong Kong. On the side here, we have the area for the floppy disk drive. Check my dong. And then swinging round to the back, we have the power button, USB-C for power, HDMI, and three USB ports. Nothing really to see on this side, but on the bottom we have these small vents and four rubber feet to stop it from slipping around the table. Sweaty hands slip off joystick. Under the main box, we have two more for mouse and game controller. Inside this one, we have a beige HDMI cable and the USB tank mouse. Inside the controller box, we have a USB to USB-C cable and the CD32 style control pad. The quick guide is in multiple languages, English, French, Italian, German, Spanish, and Polish. It contains one and a half pages of warnings as well as two and a half pages of useless junk. The A500 Mini is much smaller than the Amiga 500 Plus. There are some noticeable differences, such as the badge and the debossed lettering here. We should also reiterate that the keys are for decoration only. You can see into the vents at the top, so it may help with cooling. But let's check the size. The A500 Mini is around 12 Roybosch tea bags big and is now the smallest Amiga to date. Cute like your mom. <laughs> we mentioned the floppy drive before. Let's try and insert a floppy disk. I believe this used to have strap racer on it. Damn it, you copied over my favorite gay. Let's see if we can slip in a floppy disk. You need to use more lubrication. Unfortunately, the answer is no. <laughs> It would be pretty cool if this supported USB floppy drives, but it can't. Sorry! The mouse retains the iconic shape of the original tank mouse, yet shortens it slightly by one centimeter. The buttons feel similar, yet not as firm. It is also slightly smaller, and the click is a little different. It's not the size that counts. Moving them around does feel similar, but the biggest difference between these two is the lack of ball. <laughs> The older computer mice had a ball which moved around these rollers inside. They tend to attract dirt and are not as consistent as the optical mice. Let's get to the game controller. The D-pad has a lot of travel. With each input I give it, it already feels like there's a delay. The colored buttons here feel pretty decent, much like a Super Nintendo control pad. The L and R buttons are very clicky and they feel pretty cheap, but the unorthodox design fits nice in my hands. 
We'll need a HDMI display that supports 720p and at least a 1 amp adapter for USB. We're going to use a 2 amp adapter just in case it needs any more power. This monitor has no speakers, so we'll use these. Problem, we need an audio socket. And the only way to get it is out the monitor. If you don't have an audio out, you need to get a HDMI audio extractor. Let's plug in the controller and mouse and we should be good to go. Boot up takes this long. One, two, three, four, five, once I caught official live, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I am John Lu. 17 seconds. On first boot, we're greeted to a language select screen, then we're given a choice of either 50 or 60 Hz. Let's move to the games list. We can cycle through these by pushing left and right, and if we push up, we can see the controls for the selected game. If we push down, we can see the saved games. These work like save states in an emulator. Let's check out the options screen. In the display options, we have the following. Fixed size, moderate zoom, and screen fit. We also have a CRT effect and image smoothing. See if you can spot the difference. Screen fit looks alright for the most part, but pixel size is not uniform throughout the whole screen. If you have text, it is very obvious, but if you have smooth set to on, it fixes it up. In the system options, we can adjust mouse sensitivity and music volume. With this option set to on, the power LED flashes when data is being accessed. From here, we can change the language, and in the advanced options, we can adjust television settings, as well as see random information. I don't think anyone really cares about legal notices, right? We can also reset to factory default or shut down. Anyway, it's time for some gameplay. Here's another world. I don't know how they missed this, but they should have bound jump to a button on the joypad. There also seems to be some controller latency issues, which we'll check later on in this video. the Chaos Engine. Even though this is a great game, the input latency is quite obvious. This game is based on my life. I became half man, half machine. I was the Chaos Engine. And here's Speedball 2 Brutal Deluxe. Stunt Car Racer. Remember, if you want to play Zool, make sure you press space on the title screen. To do this, we press select, go to the space bar, then press your button. Now we can have music. Let's rock on with five continues. And also, let's speed this up. Oh dear. If we set the game speed to normal, we can actually play this bug free. Next up is Simon the Sorcerer. This is a point and click adventure game where we'll need to use the mouse. Fortunately, the mouse is a lot better than the included gamepad. To add some extra games, we'll need to get a USB stick. I've chosen a 16GB sand disk, and we'll use this free tool called Rufus to format it. Links are in the video description. And we'll format it to FAT32 using MBR. Any volume label will be fine. And then hit start. And now we'll need to add a few files from the Retro Games website. We'll need to get the load package. Are they even trying? We'll need to press download here, and then the down arrow here. 
and then we can do the same for the bonus USB game. Now open the files, then extract them to the USB stick. Just drag this folder over. This has more drag than that girl from Discovery. And then same for the other one. If you want more games, then you'll need to fill up this folder here. You'll need to use WHD load version of the game in LHA format. You can find a few of the files on this website. Killer Gorilla started this years ago. Would be cool to catch up. Anyway, we're going to find this PD game called Super Twinteris. One of the best versions of Tetris out there. And here it is. Right click, save as, then throw it in the A500 games folder. If you want to add more compatibility for this, we need to head off to Horace and the Spiders GitHub. Right click this XML, save link as, go to memory card, the A500, WHD boot, game data, and overwrite this file. When you're done, make sure you eject it safely. Then pop your stick into the mini. Stick it in good. We'll have a new option in the games menu. Selecting this will give us a file browser where we can find our games. If we highlight a game and then push the menu button, we'll have new options for both controllers and display. Let's try some of these added games. We'll need to get the virtual keyboard up and then push F1. And yeah, it works pretty well. The original Lotus game works good too. Here's Sensible World of Soccer 9596. And Maniac Mansion. If we go back to the games menu, and press down, we can save the game state. Now let's really test this thing. Here's Fire and Ice. You can already hear that the music is struggling. And the game is not playing full speed. This is because the hardware is not powerful enough for copper emulation. We can try the CD32 version, but this also plays rather slow. Another one I'd like to test is Jim Power in Mutant Planet. Oh dear. Emulation here is on par with a Pi 3B+, but with added controller latency. Other games we tried were Vroom. This one has graphical glitching, and it plays far too fast. Another favourite I like to have on the Amiga is It Came From The Desert. The desert. This intro is playing far too fast. Thankfully the game is somewhat playable, but it wouldn't chance a long gaming session with it. Slowing it down is possible by editing the UAE file and adding these lines. We won't be able to fix the graphical glitches, as we need a newer version of Amiberry. Let's try some other game controllers. Apparently this one, that came with the C64 Mini, should work. This joystick, however, feels like absolute tripe. Mushy buttons, and a mushy stick. My stick is always hard. This is much more responsive than the original controller, and it has the extra buttons so we can get back to the menu. But as it feels like absolute garbage, we cannot recommend this. But this, I bought 10 years ago. It's a Competition Pro USB, fully micro-switched. It's not compatible. Sorry guys. Apparently the newer Speedlink Competition Pro works with this unit just fine. Next up is the BTOP BFM gamepad. Which works. This super cheap Super Nintendo pad works. The Logicool F310 works great. 
The Xbox 360 Hori Arcade Stick works too. If you have the Pooh Brown 8-Bit Doe Dongle, that will work with a variety of pads. We tried both the 8-Bit Doe Grey and Black, and also the Mayflash Magic NS, which are all incompatible. We also tried the Logitech K400 keyboard, and every letter worked swimmingly. The touchpad on the right also doubles up as a mouse. And we gave a two-player mouse game a try. Here's the settlers, but the A500 Mini could not see them as separate devices. Fail. We tested the control latency, and the mouse worked great on the A500 Mini. On a Windows machine, there were multiple input drops, and every now and then, it felt like it stopped working. As suspected, the gamepad had high input latency. It was skipping frames and also very unreliable. Disappointing, to say the least. If we compare it to the joystick bundled with the C64 Mini, the joystick gets around 20 milliseconds of latency, but feels like absolute arse. Here's the Hori Xbox 360 arcade stick, which is compatible, has low latency, and it feels majestic. Okay, okay, I get it. You wanna have a real Amiga joystick experience? Let's make an adapter. Get a zero delay USB encoder board. We need to have one that supports Xbox 360 PC mode, and this one has around 10 milliseconds of controller latency. Now to strip some wires. A trip to Las Vegas it is. We'll need a male DB9 connector. A sausage party. Add some flux. And then solder. I'm not the best at soldering. But if it connects, we should be good. Ladies and gentlemen, a joystick adapter. Looks like absolute ours. The encoder board is attached by USB. And we have a problem. Directions don't work. For this, we had to change the red direction wires for the black ones. How good is that? And this is how it should be. This plays loads better. And this is me against Emmy Gamer. Oh, 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 oh. If you want to keep up with some of the mods that are available, check this thread on the EAB. This has always been the place to go for Amiga information. There's a link in the description down below. One second, guys. Amiberry 3.3? Well, if you feed the A500 Mini a blank LHA file, it'll give you this. The thing is, Amiberry and this loader were not actually mentioned on this credit screen. And that's not exactly a problem, as it's on a GPL3 license. What is the problem, however, is that with this license, retro games need to share all of their source code. From this, A500 Mini owners should be able to create their own version of Amiberry to run on their devices. They only shared the source code weeks after the Mini was released, and only when they found to be using Amiberry. They've also not shared information on their toolchain, so all of this is pretty much useless. To add to this, WHD load devs were not contacted until only a couple of months before the initial release date. As this system needs both Amiberry and WHD load, you'd think Retro Games would have been in contact with them from the start, rather than act innocent when you smell like rotten cabbage. Time for the teardown. There's one screw at the top, four more underneath the rubber feet, and one last one under the sticker. Once all six screws are out, we can pull it apart. On the bottom half of the case, we have these three weights. And on the top, we have the circuit board, as well as the plastic keyboard. You can unplug this LED here, and the circuit board is attached to the case with these screws. We have a two gigabit NAND here. It's 256 megabytes. We couldn't find much information about these RAM chips, but going off the numbers, 512 megabytes in total. Apparently this is an all-winner H6, quad-core, 1.8 GHz. The mouse only has two screws holding it together, opens up like a Kinder Egg, and there's not much in here. Nice to see they've added a weight, but looking at the circuit board, this mouse could have been far smaller than it already is. The game controller is held together with five screws, and this too has a weight in it. It's fairly easy to take apart, just remove the shoulder buttons, and you can pull out the main board. I think it's time for the pros and cons. 
The A500 Mini looks beautiful. It made me tear up like a little baby. It's cool to see that now we have an Amiga that can be hooked up to HDMI. It has a nice games menu and you can add your own games. Comparing it to other mini systems, this is extremely expensive. Especially when considering this is an emulated games machine and not a real computer. The gamepad is trash and many games that you add just won't work. This could improve if they update the firmware with the newer version of Amiberry. But the hardware is underpowered and for Amiga emulation there are better alternatives. The HK1 box, the mub. It's only $40, and if you add MULEC to it, it will turn it into an emulation powerhouse. The Raspberry Pi 400 kit. Use this as a dedicated Pi Amiga, and it'll run all your demos and games at full speed. We really cannot recommend this unless you want to just place it on a shelf to look at. It could be a nice case, or it could be an entry point for a new Amiga user, provided they use the mouse or a different controller. While I play some Micro Machines with Balls, we just want to say thank you to all of those on our Patreon. Your continued support helps us tremendously, and we hope to continue pumping out non-BS reviews like this. We also produce video guides, as well as work on our Pandora tool, unlocking cheap arcade boxes around the world. Don't forget to mention Outer Space, I have that covered, as I am John Luke, Interdimensional Super Pimp. Good point, buddy. Anyway, if you enjoyed this review, please hit that like, subscribe, and maybe share it with your friends. This has been Amy Chicken of Team Pandory, and I'll catch you on the next one. Ta-ra!